What it is, yo. We're back with another top five exclusive right here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I'm Alan. I'm Brandy. And today we are continuing with our character actors and actresses. Uh, last week we did the actors. This time the actresses have their turn. Um, again, I mean character actress. I mean, how do you define what a character actress is? Um, I mean, I think we came up with like a kind of okay definition where it's like they show up in like supporting roles and they really do a good job mm -hmm. uh, each time. So uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. Um, okay. You started last time, so. I'll start this time. Uh, my number five character actress is um, one of those actresses that I've seen around, um, and her name is Margot Martindale. Oh, okay. Um, a character, or, or an actress that I've seen in films like Million Dollar Baby. She was Hilary Swank's mom in that film. Uh, she was on Dexter, Secretariat. Uh, you can go on and on. Um, but the thing that really kind of stuck with me uh, about uh, about her was her segment in uh, Paris Je Thème. Okay. Uh, she played the character in the last section of that film. Uh, a really kind of subtle but yet really effective uh, performance. She plays this tourist uh, exploring Paris and everything like that and she kind of describes it to her French class and she she describes the story, she narrates it in French but in really bad French <laughs> and I just thought that was really, there's just something really sweet about that and I was really touched about how she talked about, oh you know, I'm in this beautiful city and I don't have anyone to share it with mm -hmm. and, and everything. I was like, wow, this is really, really effective. It's really kind of moving, you know. And um, She can be sweet and she can be tough, like she also just won an Emmy for Justified. Right? Yeah, so. yeah. Uh, but I mean for me, when I, when I hear uh, that name and I see that face, I think of uh, that that film and how good she was in, in that performance so good pick i like it thank you all right <laughs> my number five uh an actress who is in a lot of comedies uh shows up doing voice work in cartoons a lot and is probably well known to uh children of the 80s for being the principal secretary in ferris bueller's day off mm. uh edie mcclurg i think she's hysterical you know the sort of you know, funny voiced redhead who just pops up in all kinds of things. And probably my my favorite moment of hers ever is just that one scene in Planes, Trains, and Automobiles mm -hmm. with the, <laughs> where she just has the best line in the whole movie after Steve Martin has been oh, railing yeah, at her about the rental her the, car. Yeah, and she just airport, goes, yeah. you're fucked. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's one it's of a the perfect, moments. a perfect film moment. And, you know, she. I wish I saw her in more stuff because mm -hmm. I so often just see her, um, her name in the credits of like, uh, I don't know, a cartoon series or something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't see her as much as I would like to, but love her. Yeah, yeah, great, great pick. Um, okay, moving on to my number four. Uh, my number four character actress um, is one that is known, uh, whose name is. Uh, well, you know, let's just say this. She <laughs> was a character actress, but I think her stock has risen a little high to be considered a real character actress. Um, most people will probably know her in Glee, and uh. the actress is Jane Lynch. Um, again, she is... Man, she's really, really funny. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so effective. I, she's been working for a while, too. I mean, I remember her as the doctor in The Fugitive, you know? <laughs> um, but... I think what really brought attention from me to her was her role in The 40-Year-Old Virgin, yeah, uh, where she pretty so much funny. stole every scene that she was in. I mean, that <laughs> that one song she sings in Spanish to Steve Carell <laughs> she was just keeps going. hilarious and, like, oh, and creepy, <laughs> which is what made it awesome. Um, <laughs> but everything she does is just super quality, and she just has like really that unique look. I mean, she's super tall, super lanky, and... <laughs> she works it. She has that kind of like dry humor that can yeah. be kind of mean but also really funny at the same time I love so. her before she went over the top as Sue Sylvester too in the first season of Party Down mm, yeah, I was, yeah Party mm -hmm. Down yeah all right, uh, my number four, a character actress who this year is, uh, I don't know, by the time this comes out, might have an Oscar nomination. Hello. And that is Octavia Spencer. Who oh, yeah. Who was uh, the very best part about The Help, I thought, um, mm. which is a, an entertaining but highly problematic film. And she, the role that she plays, you know, the sort of sassy best friend maid, could so easily have been... Uh, just a painful cartoon to watch, but she is so good and puts so much emotion into it um, that 
it's the highlight of the film mm -hmm. and the character that you're really most rooting for it to get her revenge. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she's been, she has been regulated before this to playing, I think just sort of like the crazy person. She was mm -hmm. like one of the dinner guests and dinner for schmucks. And mm -hmm. she was like mm -hmm. this crazy, uh, social worker or something on ugly Betty, or I've seen her in other things where she plays like, the, the one of my least favorite roles of all time the the hefty prostitute who's like someone goes to Aww. see like in bad santa or something like yeah. that you know uh just a waste of an incredible talent so i'm really hoping that the help makes people realize like you just you have to write more roles for her you just have to mm -hmm. yeah i'm kind of i'm kind of hesitant to to see the help uh not because of uh her or anything like that it's because of um just other things that i don't really want to delve into right yeah. now um but yeah she's definitely someone that people should be on the lookout for if mm -hmm. they haven't already known about her yeah uh, moving on to my number three uh my number three character actress uh, again is one that I haven't seen a lot in like lead roles, but she she does awesome work in supporting stuff. And um, this actress is Amy Ryan. Oh, I um, love Amy Ryan. Man, like everything she does is just freaking mm -hmm. golden, dude. From The Wire to her Oscar nomination, Gone Baby Gone, to her work in Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, Jack Goes Boating, and of course The Office. I mean, it seems like she has like this extremely, well, it's not yeah. that she seems, it is the fact that she has this extreme wide range of talent where she could play comedy and drama. Uh, she could play characters that are kind of vulnerable, but at the same time, she could play tough characters. Mm -hmm. uh, just someone who's like really just well-rounded uh, as an actor, um, just and every time I see her, I just like, oh, I want to see what she's up to in whatever project she's in. Mm -hmm. So she was great the um, this year too in Win Win. Win Win, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote that down as well, yeah. So yeah, I love Amy she, Ryan. She should have her own show, I think. But <laughs> I won't disagree with you. All right, my number three. Uh, I'm just gonna say Diane Weist. Like she's just awesome. She's been in so many things. Let's talk about that with my number two. Oh! <laughs> this is our first crossover. Diane Reese, what's um, up? She won an Oscar for Hannah and Her Sisters, which is my favorite Woody Allen movie. Obviously, um, she was also in his The Purple Rose of Cairo. She She's also won one in uh, Bullets Over Broadway. Yeah. Yep. Um, she is in The Birdcage. She's wonderful in Edward Scissorhands. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's wonderful in everything that she's in. And just, like, that's a name. Like, she's, she's so solid, but you rarely see her, like as the like in the trailer for the film you know like because she's gonna be you know you might catch a glimpse of her but then you're about to start watching something and her name pops up like seventh in the credits and you're like score diane weiss is yeah in this. yeah <laughs> she's so great mm -hmm. it's like whatever role she takes even if it's like a completely different kind of character there's some sort of like there's kind of a a warmth or something mm -hmm. kind of a, a way that she portrays herself or her characters that kind of gravitates people to her uh, even when she plays unlikable characters or or characters that are kind of obnoxious there's kind of like i don't know if it's sweetness or or just something some kind of like vulnerability or something mm -hmm. that makes you want to like her no matter what she's doing you know yeah i totally agree and um while i was you know looking up stuff for this segment mm -hmm. i saw that she's been on the hbo show in treatment which i had basically no interest in and now that i know that she's one of the doctors on there now i want to watch it like that was mm -hmm. that was enough for me you just forget gabriel byrne you should just told me that diane Weiss was in it she's so good i mean she, <laughs> she was great in synecdoche new york oh, uh, yeah, where she kind of yeah. played mm -hmm. like the Philip Seymour Hoffman character inside the story, inside the oh, story, kind of like weird and great. But so she kind of took it over and like became the director of the entire <laughs> thing. It was pretty. It's pretty awesome. And I don't. I can't really think of another actress who would have been able to pull it off as well as she does. Exactly. Very subtle in that performance too. All right. Um, so that was your number two. So now my number two. Um, going back to the funny ladies, uh, Catherine O'Hara. Oh yeah, who yeah. is okay. uh, you know a member of the whole Christopher Guest mockumentary troupe? Mm -hmm. uh, she is obviously the mom in Home Alone. Alone. I love her there. Yeah. Um, has done some great voice work, like in The Nightmare Before Christmas and in Where the Wild Things Are. Mm -hmm. And of course, probably my favorite role of hers in Beetlejuice. <laughs> yes. So over the top, so crazy. I mean, she, Catherine O'Hara is hilarious she is, is hilarious. Just, i don't know how she wasn't like 
in Bridesmaids as well <laughs> as like with the rest of them. Like, whose mom could she have been? Like, yeah. You know, it's yeah. just like, I want her to be in all comedies all the time. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, roles that I remember her a lot from was, I believe, in After Hours. Right, where uh, she was kind of one of the crazy characters that kind of throws uh, Griffin Dunn in like the weird. I think was she was the her? one. I think it was right. She was the one that was kind of leading the uh, the horde, like chasing after him and everything. I don't right? remember. Okay, we're gonna have to get like verification <laughs> gonna, yeah, on that. So we're gonna have a correction. I believe it was Catherine O'Hara, <laughs> but uh, double check me on that. Um, okay, let's move on to my number one. Okay. Um, okay, my number one is a little bit of a cheat because up until maybe two years ago she was a character actress but she's kind of pushed herself into the spotlight um that actress's name is melissa leo okay um i you know yeah, i kind of debated she's borderline it borderline you know, right now yeah, borderline for sure. you know but she's pretty high profile she's these definitely days, high but... profile um looks like we're getting confirmation that it was Catherine O'Hara. So <laughs> yes my memory serves me Good correctly job. thank you i'm sorry i ever doubted you going back to melissa leo um i mean even before she won her Oscar in The Fighter, she, she was, like, doing work, like, all the time. Like, she was constantly working, uh -huh. uh, being in so many movies um, from the very beginning. I mean, she was a regular on All My Children. Kind of a guilty pleasure soap opera that I watched. Um, <laughs> always 21 Grams. Um, she was fantastic as the lead in Frozen River. Um, and even now, like two, like, in the past year... She was in eight credited projects. Holy crap. I mean, she's... So we're going to tail off. Definitely, man. She, like... And I don't even know what to say. I mean, you can say how great she is, how she kind of takes roles that are, quote-unquote, unattractive. I mean, she's willing to, like, make herself ugly, I guess you can say. Um, just even though it's a powerful performance. Um, I'm really at a loss of words because it, it seems like Melissa Leo is one of those characters... I'm sorry, one of those actresses where everything you could say has already been said about her. So. Yeah, she's had a big couple years. For yeah, sure. absolutely. Yeah. So great. keep it going, yeah. Leslie. Okay, uh, my number one is character actress who I wish, another one I just wish I would see in more stuff, although right now she is um, one of the stars of the Showtime show Shameless, which is great and people should watch it, and that is Joan Cusack. Oh, yeah. Yes, I love Joan. She's been nominated for two Oscars for Best Supporting Actress for Working Girl and in and out mm. She was also hysterical in Broadcast News. She, uh, <laughs> I love, I think is highly underrated, Adam's Family Values. <laughs> she is like the villain in that one mm -hmm. with the, you know, she's Uncle Fester's wife. Or <laughs> yeah. I, I love that Adam's Family Movies. Gross Point Blank. Yeah, she's in Gross, Gross Point, Point Blank. Blank. I have it yeah. written right here. It's okay. I wasn't done. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, the voice of Jesse in the Toy Story movies. Mm. I mean, I kind of feel like she's the highlight when she's in a movie that I don't even like that much, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's been in some weird stuff in the last few years, and uh, but I'm always glad to see her. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I wish people would stop casting John Cusack to be a star of stuff because he's I was... too weird these days and start giving her some roles. Like, yeah. I don't understand. But again, she is, she's very, very good in a tricky role on, on Shameless, which is a great show. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just going to mention, she kind of like, it seems like her and her brother have been casted together so many times that it's kind of hard to like separate the two. It seems like she kind of like has been under his shadow these days, for a while. yeah but he's been doing um, like terrible horror movies and she's been continuing to I but like know, like you said i would definitely i definitely like to see her more uh in more work more starring work too you know yeah, so absolutely okay so that does it for our top five character actresses again i mean it's so broad there's so many uh names yeah, that can it's be hard mentioned. to nail down the criteria um, please let us know who you think are the best out there um at mcguffinpodcast.com and we will see you guys next time